Um, Dad? Yeah? What is the mind? Is it just a system of impulses, or is it something tangible? Relax. What is mind? No matter. What is matter? Never mind. The Ken's Laser. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Occam's Laser, where we talk about science, philosophy, and more. We're your hosts, Dulto Fionagon and Sean Mooney. This week's episode, we'll be talking to Laura Hayes, who's an astrophysicist working in NASA. We had some technical issues during the recording of this podcast, but we're just going to jump straight in and uh, hope you enjoy the recording. How are you, lads? Well. Thanks for having me. Well, so we usually... So there's two segments. Um, we usually... One of the segments is we talk about some stories in the news, um, like large cows, which may come in and out. Yeah, but we might have large cows later Will on. we start with the cows, or will we start with our guest, how she's doing? I think we should, yeah, just doing. like one or two things about the guest, maybe. Yeah. And uh, then we can go from there, because we don't really have a structure or a format. No, no, yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think the audience are probably just waiting to hear about Laura. Yeah, yeah. they don't care about us. Yeah, so. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it Dr. Laura? Not yet. So I've submitted my thesis, my old PhD thesis, and I'm defending it in January, so a few weeks' time. Ooh. Woo-hoo. Uh, and then hopefully I'll be a doctor, and I'm going to make everybody call me doctor. Yeah. <laughs> nice. No, no, not at all. And then a doctor um, of? A doctor of solar physics, or physics, I guess, in general. Yeah. So I did my PhD um, in the astrophysics group in Trinity College Dublin, and what I was doing was looking at the physics of the sun, and in particular, these things called solar flares, which are big explosions off the sun. Um, so we try to understand them in different wavelengths and using different instruments, both from NASA and from the European Space Agency, uh, to try to get a better understanding of the physics of what's going on. And did you find that out? Yeah, it was solved. <laughs> <a> great. <laughs> we now know the sun. <laughs> Next. <laughs> yeah, no, I think um, we made some good work and good progress and kind of helped our understanding a little bit. Um, but it's an ongoing process, and I think uh, the continued work in Trinity and collaborations across the world hopefully will get a better feel for it yeah but, but I always find that the, the research questions for when you're doing outreach stuff are always so big that yeah. there's no way you actually answer it for your you oh, know no, your no, thesis no, no. like if you're actually to give your specific thesis that you achieve people you know they think it's, it's so incremental I mean people's yeah, like I always really say narrow. Like, yeah, yeah. I always say like understanding black holes or something like <laughs> you know yeah like it's a bit mad and even within the field of like if you're studying solar physics or even in particular solar flares like what you do is so different to what someone else does, and you're so in a niche of your own thing. Yeah, but yeah, like yeah they're still tiny building solar flares. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, M flares are a thing, right? They are. Yeah, see, I'm all about the knowledge. Yeah. There you go, that's it. <laughs> and, and do you have a job lined up? I do have a job lined up, um, so I'm going to head over to NASA um, for a two year contract. So, nice. kind of working on similar stuff. Um, more flares? More flares. <laughs> <laughs> Sun's still flaring. Um, I'm kind of work with the team over there, uh, working with them throughout my PhD, so it should be exciting, looking forward to it. That sounds good. Yeah. You've been in NASA before. Yeah, yeah. And I always wanted to ask this, right? So <laughs> <laughs> uh, from the outside, if you're not in academia, you assume that like big companies like NASA and like the European Space Agency and even like somewhere like UCD like are well-run, well-structured organizations internally. There's never quibbles. Everything is set up well. Um, but then I found that that is not the case in a lot of organizations. But that movie about the space women in oh, NASA. Yeah. Hidden figures. Uh, hidden yeah. figures, yeah. So that kind of gave the impression that, it, like, because given that it was so long ago, it actually is set up quite well, NASA internally. But, I mean, is there, I mean, like, assuming NASA aren't listening. To I mean, it. also in that film, it, it was completely, like, you know, segregated. And everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that Nicely wasn't. structured. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> all the people in the right places. <laughs> I didn't say good structure, but like, <laughs> it's a structure. I guess it was old. But. Yeah, I guess. Right. I mean, I think when you go into anything, you can always find a few flaws. Um, when I was there myself, I didn't. There was nothing kind of blaring. Maybe mm. when I go, I'll find it. But um, it's also an institute that's been around for a very long time, so they kind of have stuff set up and they have things in place that's kind of easy to. I don't know get you set up with a desk and a yeah like they've probably like had that. like lots of problems already that yeah. they know how to fix now yeah um and kind of play, play, like i guess in university it's difficult when you're dealing with different grants that are coming in and there's loads of people aren't talking to each other where there it's like a federal agency that kind of has this umbrella like of course it probably is problems but yeah i mean they get money directly from the u.s government yeah. and everything so yeah, yeah. 
That's um, fair enough. But yeah, no, it's true. I mean, also when you think about NASA, you think of a big shiny building that you go into and everything's top Rocket. secret. Yeah. And then you end up just going Rocket. into like a building that was built in the 70s full of asbestos yeah. and you're just doing science. You know, it's, it's, it's I was not really like disappointed by ESA when I went over ESTEC in yeah. the Netherlands. It was like, yeah, a really antiquated building. But yeah. This was, they were all like formed in the 70s, like basically. Yeah. They all kind of were like, yeah, we need brand new buildings back in like 1972. And yeah, so they yeah. built everything in grey blocks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Like, They're yeah. like, this will age fantastically. <laughs> <laughs> what that's like, yeah. Yeah. But I guess the thing is, it's more like the institute in itself. So it might be in a shitty building. I shouldn't say that. But a building that's not like fabulous. But it's the people that are there. Like you're yeah. in yeah. a building when you're like, oh, I, I don't know how to use the data from this instrument. They're like, oh, you should go talk to Bill. He's just down the hall. Oh, yeah, and yeah. it's just hundreds of scientists yeah, there. Yeah, he all built really that excited. instrument. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's like the, that's my, kind of the glam about it. My pet peeve, one of the things of doing a PhD in astrophysics, people always assume like, are you going to go work for NASA? And I'm always like, no, they're mainly like a lot of stuff they do is engineering. I mean, a lot of, if you want to stay in, especially like extragalactic physics, you know, you're not yeah. sending anything there. So you're just going to be... Um, working, working in the university yeah, doing like from research so I always yeah. cut them down to size but now you're booking the trend but I guess solar physics is more yeah like I guess if you're doing observations um, yeah. you kind of want to be near where the the instruments were being built or with the instrument team yeah. and things like that um, but that's true like it is just you could have an institute that's um, top in what you study and that's where you want to go NASA just has this name um, yeah. from going to and NASA has quite a big like solar department yeah, they, yeah so. they do exactly yeah, yeah. but are they like a lot of their name is also probably built because they're on the west coast right are you going to california no um the yeah, only so one that's not on <laughs> well no there's florida as well I guess, no there's like seven ones. right um yeah there's quite a few that you just you don't hear of half of them yeah. I think. were you asked this in your interviews this way you know all that <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> not at all like i guess um so the one i'm going to people don't really know about it. it's in maryland it's top a, secret it's, because yeah. or because it's like yeah. low-key it's actually where kind of hidden figures is based right oh, yeah, so there's cool. like langley i think at the time um but it's like Maryland a place called NASA Goddard uh, in Greenbelt um, and they don't kind of like obviously don't shoot off rockets there but they kind of do a lot of engineering there um, and that's where their heliophysics department is so most of their kind of uh, solar physics stuff will be there yeah um, all of the academic kind of side of things yeah exactly yeah. so kind of more the research side and then in California you have like NASA Ames which would be much more engineering mm. and that would be kind of much more difficult to go as a foreign national because Vitar rails where you can't go anywhere near rockets, you can't go anywhere near engineering unless you're yeah, a US citizen. Yeah. So yeah, basically that that's that really bad rule that means that we can't work for like SpaceX or anybody like that because they're afraid we'll sell all the rockets to Iran. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But or at North least Korea. we can work for the European Space Agency. <laughs> yeah, or any rock yeah. company from Europe. <laughs> but like that's one of the things, like just of having um like Hollywood like Hollywood kind of helped the name of NASA so much more and I hate going oh, to talk yeah, about yeah. the school and I'm like we have one European space agency and kids are like what's that like, yeah, yeah. About and it's not like a national thing either you know so yeah. it's like international yeah. it's like oh yeah well we have like seven people working yeah. there or something <laughs> that's kids, probably more than yeah, that I kids love what. nothing more than a large interdisciplinary like countries like <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. Like, and it's not even directly the EU either it's like you sign up apart from that yeah the technicalities yeah. are the best bit to explain yeah yeah you're just like well the EU is this <laughs> yeah. sort of co a collaboration of states but ESA <laughs> is this collaboration of states yeah. but um, yeah that's cool though NASA working doing yeah. science yeah it'll be an interesting two years anyway yeah it should be good look forward to it go uh, live in states uh, for a while yeah cha a big Set change from the the humble town of Burr. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, Burr's lovely, Burr's lovely. <laughs> you have all of Burr after you now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and you're at Dias now. Yeah, I'm at Dias. Um, so it's the Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies. Now, um, I have some gripes with that name. Oh, yeah? It's the most you don't audacious think it's advanced name. Enough? <laughs> I mean... The, the, advanced the, studies yeah, exactly and it's so generic as well and like, yeah they also like do random things aren't yeah, they Celtic yeah. and but I don't actually know what <laughs> they do so they do astrophysics uh, cosmology uh, geology maybe or theoretical physics yeah, geology theoretical physics, yeah. uh, Spanish no and Celtic studies I think yeah and, and you're doing Celtic studies now <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah just for this couple of months yeah, now yeah. Yeah. before you go to uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, it's Misha Laura no um there was an XKCD thing where they were um, just mocking, like, uh, you know, how fancy you want your lab to sound, and depending on what you call it, like, I think Institute was top of the list, you know, versus like uh, School of Physics, like Institute of Physics, and different yeah. words carry 
But Dublin Institute of Advanced Studies is uh, yeah, advanced. Yeah, we put advanced, advanced in there just yeah. to say Dublin Institute better. Yeah. 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 It's unnecessary. <laughs> so it's DIS definitely Dublin Institute yeah. of Studies. <laughs> it's a step down though to go work at NASA now. I mean they're not even advanced. Yeah. They're just, <laughs> just what is it, aeronautics? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I want to go to the advanced NASA. No. Um, yeah, so I've been DIS now for the next few months before I head over. Yeah. Um, just finishing up some stuff for my PhD. Working on a cool website called Solar Monitor. Wow. <laughs> if you want to monitor the that sun. that plug in there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Convert an old this, idea. This Python. episode is actually sponsored by Solar Monitor. <laughs> sponsored by the Solar Group and Dias. Yeah. <laughs> advanced uh, Studies. <laughs> the Advanced Solar Group. But that's another institute that was really, uh, in its heyday, money was thrown into it, like when Ireland somehow cared about that kind yeah, of stuff. When and Deb was they the just, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay, let's just draw a line there and freeze it. And just I feel like it wasn't so much Ireland, but just a couple of lads up at the top end of the government were like, yeah, let's just throw a couple yeah. of, I don't know, at the time, yeah. probably 100,000 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, what are we going to do with all this money? Whereas like the people in Ireland had no idea that money was going there. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's mad they got Schrodinger over at the time. Like, that's what kind of made Dias its name. That is crazy, yeah. 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 But money really, like really the really, world really go does no but like <laughs> make the difference in the field like yeah because i know like some really good postdocs who wanted to come to ireland and then they just looked at the wages and they're like i can't like i you know it would yeah. suit the lifestyle is good it's english like is their first language and it works but they're just like i yeah. can't go and oh, it's so expensive to live here as well compared to yeah. like the, yeah. the wage cost of living ratio and other yeah we'll just be homeless and then i guess you get rid they, of yeah you don't yeah. pay rent perfect yeah. solved yeah all righty uh, will we talk about cows for a second? I don't yeah, know. go on talk about now cows. That, now that our guest is introduced, you know everything you need to know about Laura Hayes. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Ooh. Um. Uh, yeah, so basically, I saw an article there. I think it was yesterday, so it was on Reddit. And I just kind of thought nothing of it, you know, scrolled through. Um, I thought it was a bit mad. And then it came up on like RTE as well, and I was like, "This is such a, it must be a it slow must be news serious. day, yeah, <laughs> or a slow, slow news day." But basically, there was this uh, steer, which is just like a neutered bull. Uh, in, You're obviously from the country. No, I have to look that up. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I've never used the word steer in my life. I think it's an Australian word. Anyway, this was in Australia, and it's just this clip that was on Reddit, and obviously RTE latched onto it and then researched it more. But basically, the the steer is six foot four tall six foot four inches tall wow uh, like at the yeah. back of it so it just shows it across this like herd of normal cattle and yeah. it's like twice the height of everything else yeah. but the cow couldn't fit into the abattoir so they let it it's just it's let live now it gets that's to live cool. out its full life that's cool head. i mean well this like it's weird that, that the cow could get that big but I went down the rabbit hole and started looking up the tallest cows ever so, <laughs> so yeah. 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 go on I was going to say like, was this cow born to an, a normal cow I don't know I th- like <laughs> actually it didn't say the breed of the cow or is there different breeds of cows or whatever. I am definitely from the town right? oh my no. god yes there is definitely yeah. different breeds of cows there's, there's a the black and white them. one right and there's the brown ones there are, are so there are so many different breeds of cows I don't know them but I know that there are many <laughs> is a buffalo a cow it's a wild cow, I guess. <laughs> a wild cow? <laughs> <laughs> no, like it's a uh, species of bovine, maybe? I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so the, this massive, like, you know, bull uh, in Australia, his name is Knickers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? So you see, like, a massive cow, uh, it's a male, like, bull, and you call it Knickers. Yeah. It's just very funny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But yeah, so the, the obviously I looked up the world record then for the tallest cow, and it's six foot, almost eight inches tall. What? Yeah, that's which massive. is huge. That's, like so that's in height, so that's not end to end. Like that's just no, that's from the like tip head. of its little hoof to the top of its <laughs> so head. So is that its height, or is that like its length? Wait, no, what? it's his height. <laughs> okay. Like from the, from the bottom of his leg yeah. to his back, I think. This reminds maybe me maybe the top of the head. That thing of like which way does a dog wear pants? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah well, how do you measure a cow? Yeah. So, but if that cow could stand up straight, it would be really tall. Oh, it would be huge. Yeah. Yeah, he would be. But like, that's almost seven feet tall. Wait, and so he was too tall to kill. Yes, essentially, he couldn't fit in the machines, yeah. so they just like, oh, you know what, let him live. Can they just like club him, or I don't know. No, I think it's. I think the machines like are for like you know dissecting, etc. Oh, really? Like because they stun thing. they stun cows before they kill them anyway. Well, the last meal is first. Oh yes, obviously the last bit of grass, the <laughs> yeah. bit of hay before they go in. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they, I think he just couldn't fit into the um, 
into the machines. Do you think that's going to be like the most expensive cow to feed? You know, I mean, like it's yeah. a huge but cost dude, for the it's, farmer. But it, it's just one. Cow. It's just one, right? Yeah. And you feed it grass, and usually you're going to have a massive field anyway. So I don't yeah. think it'll make that much. Of a yeah, difference, yeah, really. that's true. But, but it's the, gonna let him live. Yeah, no, now he's just roaming the fields, the pasture lands of Poor wherever his farmer owns. Will he keep getting bigger? I don't think so. I think he's an adult. And is it a male or a female? Yeah, it's a male. It's a neutered male. Oh, right. Yeah. 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 But uh, so the largest and heaviest breed of cow is uh, from Italy. Oh, and yeah. Never, like, ever would have guessed that. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. I, I can't pronounce the, the breed. It's like Chianina. I don't, I have no idea if that's right. But the mature bulls are 1.8 meters tall, and some of the oxen, which are also neutered bulls, I think, but uh, they can reach 2 meters tall, and can exceed 1.6 thousand kilos, which is heavier than a lot of cars. <laughs> that would be incredibly scary to me. <laughs> yeah, like, terrifying. Like, those cows are basically like types of rhino or something like that. Rhino, that's, I think a rhino is like 2 tons. It's almost the same weight as a rhino. You could, yeah. you could definitely get a burger or two off them without... Without, Eat, without them even noticing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just let them grow back and then there's the key for yeah. infinite food yeah it's perfect I solved mammoths <laughs> yeah so so on that I looked up the, the biggest horse ever oh nice <laughs> yeah and he was I think he's what, it's called Samson Sam, but, that's better than Knickers anyway yeah. <laughs> and from 1846 it doesn't really sound like it'd be true but he is 21.2 and a half hands high I don't know how uh, big a hand is. Yeah, no, I don't like that measurement <laughs> yeah. at all. What's the average hand size? Yeah, but is Male it? Male hand, is female hand? hand. Is it like a foot? Like yeah. a foot's like a measure, isn't it? Uh, is is, oh, a feet, foot's, yeah. Foot's six foot's foot. Than your hand, a, though, I, I might be wrong here. Now, this is where we get factually incorrect. Yeah, I'm just going to say a hand is five and a half inches. No, but wasn't a, a foot originally, like, in France defined as the... the size of an average Frenchman's... <laughs> yeah, it was the distance between the king's nose and the tip of his Ooh. finger or something. And every time the king died, they had to like redefine the foot. That's like a big foot. I feel. Maybe it was some other measurement. Oh, yeah, it wasn't I a meter, though. A tiny king. I don't know. Yeah, yeah we can strange. just get rid of all. Actually, we leave it in. Let's, it's an exercise we leave to the listener. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's your homework. For <laughs> this is where you get people to call in. Oh, wait, yeah. this is a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> no, that, that can't happen. Get oh, times. <laughs> yeah. you've, you've done too many <laughs> shows on RTE. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, yeah, that was just some mad story that I saw and thought it was worth sharing with everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to say I liked the RT headline. The cow was outstanding in his field. Yeah, I thought oh, it was very uh, cheesy. Very uh, That's probably why they did the story. They're like, well, we have this headline now. We have to... Yeah. In all fairness, the story was very short. It was like two paragraphs. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it was just a, sl- a slow news day. And Apart it, from like Ukraine being martial law. <laughs> that was yeah. Reddit and everything. But if you're that farmer, right? Like... Ireland is so remote, you know, to you. Like to have it there, national news agency talking about your cow that was too big to kill. That at the time yeah. you're probably like, that's weird, but you probably didn't even think it's newsworthy. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, like I think so. Somebody put it up on Reddit, and it's yeah, just a random just, yeah. video. I don't know if that person took the video, but it's weird to think that suddenly, like you're in Australia and now Ireland's national broadcaster is ringing you up about your article, like about <laughs> yeah. an article about your cow. Yeah, can we interview the cow? Can we? Yeah, we, can we get a few words, a statement, please? <laughs> But yeah, it's pity it's not a woman because she'd have a lot of milk. Yeah, there's actually a whole thing about the amount of. Uh, I don't know why this was. I was actually looking this up yeah. separately, but uh, <laughs> so, there's weird the amount yeah. of uh, milk. Busy that, day today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> busy working day. The amount of milk that cows have produced, like over the decades, has like increased by a lot. I can't remember how much, but there's a. Uh, I think actually this is mentioned in uh, Michael Lewis's new book. I think that's where mm-hmm. I heard it. But there's a world record for like the amount of milk produced by a cow, and it's an insane amount. It's like seventy, oh, I want to say gallons, but it could be liters. Okay. But it's America, so Let's it's probably gallons. To, yeah. yeah, but per day. Per day. Yeah. But is that insane. just like ag science pushing? Like, yeah, the get super chickens of, and yeah, like I think even cows themselves like have gotten so much bigger. Like that, you know, cows struggle to calf now because the calves have gotten way bigger. Yeah, and then we have the super cow. Look what it's... Yeah, no, this happened. is crazy. We're going to be like the size of elephants soon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That'd be mad. Yeah, that's a lot of milk, all right. Good, good for them. <laughs> good for yeah. good for the cow. World record of milk produced by a, a mammal. in a <laughs> <laughs> Tools it, Jesus. Oh, man. 
Uh, but they do that thing recently where like they've a lot of like farming has gone to kind of uh, like robotics and where it's kind of robot oh, cows. Robot cows. <laughs> oh, yeah, we don't actually need uh, yeah. bio- biological <laughs> We've got cows. Robot cows, um, where a cow would go in to get itself milked, and oh, it's like yeah, a robot. Yeah. But they found that the cows started to like over milk themselves because they were getting treats every time they went in. Oh really? They and didn't they just enjoy stomach. getting milked. Well, maybe they did. Yeah. 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 they not spot that? I mean, that's basic like conditioning yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you should just like tag every cow and be like if you've been here within the last like 10 minutes you can't get milked again please come back later yeah. <laughs> diminishing returns or something because mm. yeah. if yeah. you put a, like a McDonald's say and every time I went up they like squeezed my nipples for a while and then I got a free burger I would just keep going back <laughs> you know what I mean? so I, don't, I, I wouldn't yeah, blame fair. the cows here I blame the farmers the yeah, I blame the system yeah, yeah. No, that's, uh, that's good independent of whether I enjoyed it or not <laughs> you got a free burger. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Massachusetts heart. Yeah, and then well, I thought you were actually going to talk about like the lab-grown meat and. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah. interesting too. You don't even need cows anymore. Yeah. But cows can just live their happy lives in fields yeah. if we really wanted them to. But milk yeah. is really hard to make. And I could see how that would be more difficult than making the meat for some reason. I don't yeah. have any scientific basis for this. Though. Well, what, what would that? Why would you think that? I don't know. Like meat is just like muscle right or something so it's just some carbon you just get some dna from a cow and grow it it'll turn into like bits of cow but like a cow produces milk so how would you get that piece of meat to make milk (laughs) yeah it's impossible the meat would have to get pregnant first so nestle this is one of the reasons people don't like them like that they got loads of mothers in africa to feed their babies baby formula instead of um their mother's breast milk yeah and then basically the mothers then like once they weren't giving their kids breast milk then they weren't producing it and so then they had to keep giving them formulas but then oh, they, them like, on. yeah put up the price and then yeah. it's also like so baby formula is incredibly hard to make because it's so like you need anti-inflammatory antioxidants their immune system so like it's really hard to make um milk for babies and like they don't really know how to do it yet so that's why Nestle it, like, are the best way so oh my god yeah anyway but this week's uh, podcast is sponsored by Nestle yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nestle and the solar monitor <laughs> what a combination but there's yeah because there's there's things in breast milk that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very <laughs> keep going <laughs> so there there's enzymes in it that the baby can't digest yet but that they're that the well, keep going mm, okay. <laughs> we've got this all right in the breast milk <laughs> yes okay breast milk I've got this far there is enzymes yes. what are they they eat things proteins or something yeah. you know, mm. enzymes speed up the absorption or yeah. catalyst yeah something. I can't remember right so there's some biology that, there's something the baby can't digest but there's like bacteria in the breast milk and that stuff, food stuff is for basically the, 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 the bacteria in the milk it's a whole book on breast milk. <laughs> you're right, you're right. <laughs> written you by you. me. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all as vague as this conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I think that's probably enough about cows and milk. <laughs> yeah. What's your next breast milk related story? Uh, well, that's another bodily fluid we could take off, technically. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we had previous bodily fluids. I see, so. I see. Actually, I don't even know if we'll release those episodes, but. Yeah. What episodes? It kind of comes up. Yeah, what episodes? <laughs> this is number one. Um, but yeah, so. Unless there's anything to add to joint cows. Yeah. I don't know. Going back to like that lab-grown meat. Like, oh yeah. yeah. How, I actually don't know. How do like ve- vegans and vegetarians feel about that? Yeah. Do, do people well, know? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Is there a consensus? Mean. Are any of us vegetarian or vegan? I yeah. used to be. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, how do you feel about that? I mean, meat is delicious. The only reason I didn't eat it is like I felt bad for the cow or whatever. Yeah. So if somebody makes it without hurting any animals, then that's win-win. I mean, and also like so many vegetarian products are built around trying to recreate, you know, like a meaty texture. Mm-hmm. So then when you actually have meat, I think yeah. most diehard vegans don't accept it because you have to initially have a few animal cells to culture. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But so it's a, it's technically produced still produced from like an animal. But there's yeah. no necessarily animal death. I think they can just like. Oh yeah, you could. Yeah, you just yeah take whatever. some DNA. But um, apparently, it's way way more pure than. I mean, there's no antibiotics and like there's loads of shit in literal shit as well in animal meat <laughs> that you get. But this is like 100% muscle tissue, um, and it's quite easy to grow certain kinds of it but i think the issue is the like mass producing it right now is difficult yeah i think the cost is still like 300 euro per burger but a decade ago it used to be like three billion or whatever yeah and yeah, so the, we're getting there yeah. the first I, ones will all be sorry to cut across the first ones are all going to be um 
like minced meat yeah. variants because you're not so gonna they'll get all like be steak. burgers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's fair enough. Like I tried vegetarianism out, but like kind of more for the environment rather than for the animals themselves. You know, because yeah. there's such a like inefficient process energy wise to like feed an animal yeah. for years and years and years and then you and know, then they eat don't that, even eat that animal because they're massive <laughs> <laughs> yeah damn we made this cow too big yeah. but um no yeah so basically i wouldn't have any issue with that like yeah. if you could just well, yeah, make meat then it would be way more efficient would I you switch over like would you or would you be like no i want my cows no yeah have definitely have felt the pain no i definitely switch over yeah I'd, if yeah. it was like widely available and not super expensive like you know you don't yeah. want to be spending like crazy amounts of money on it but yeah that's the thing i mean even with organic and stuff when it comes out initially people are like i'll do that but then in tesco when it's like you know three euro for a chicken that's battery farmed or it's like a <laughs> 10 euro chicken that's like full of antibiotics <laughs> yeah so i mean people do often like you have to be the cheapest thing or it just it doesn't sell as well yeah but i think you would still find a market for it in like kind of those more organic shops you see nowadays yeah. uh they would probably do well there i think yeah yeah. Although I don't know, it's some, sometimes weird people who are like all pro organic and anti GMO and all that would probably be like, oh, yeah. it's chemically produced in a lab and probably Absolutely. wouldn't, They'd even though it's way better for the environment. Like, so, you know, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's true because it's like you're saying lab grown meat. It's yeah, literally it, saying, like, it's yeah. literally grown We in used lab. chemicals to yeah. make this. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah. And everything's chemicals. And also, if it's what's that company, you know, all the biology stuff that everyone hates. Um, <laughs> I don't know, there's many. Uh, anyway. That one who makes all the antioxidant, antioxidant stuff. They're jerks. <laughs> <laughs> In summary, they're jerks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm glad we got that sorted. Yeah, great. Let's all go down and eat it then. But yeah. The last thing, wouldn't it be good to work on a problem like that though? If that was your PhD, like you'd feel you're really like contributing to society. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like you're like, I'm actually going to change the world. Yeah. Yeah, change the way people buy and produce meat. Although yes. solar physicists, you hide behind the like, oh, we're actually because space weather, we yeah. like it here. Yeah. So yeah. I kind of love my, my research in with that as well because yeah. of the Yours solar type different. stars. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, we have to understand the sun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please give me money for research. <laughs> yeah. But I imagine even if you're doing study in that, like, you're not like globally trying to solve the whole problem. You're probably doing a particular thing and a particular enzyme for a particular, yeah. I don't know, what an enzyme. Yeah, but well, I guess you like, probably have a team of people yeah. who are all working together. You're probably just doing test on one thing yeah where yeah but it, you do feel like you're kind of contributing more towards a specific goal right and i could see how it would be it's probably better funded in terms of like that would be profitable if you could get oh, that definitely, to be yeah. but cheaper. ireland it, well is it like puts those funding into bio like those sciences but they don't want i mean if the ireland meat market is made oh, redundant yeah no, that's like their entire export yeah. so that's like just gone pushing that down I'm yeah sure. possibly like i wouldn't say your irc application would get accepted if you're like <laughs> yeah maybe not let's reduce the need for <laughs> agriculture <laughs> yeah that would be bad but it was one thing i'm jealous of for so the irc research applications for phd to get money you have to write this big long thing and my brother's in biology and like yeah he can say stuff like oh we're doing genetic gmo stuff that's actually helping you know putting vitamin d in rice to help asian people get vitamins or whatever yeah. they do over there but like it's so much more tenuous writing like extra galactic yeah. and i was reading a, a theoretical physicist's one <laughs> well they're you know they were applying for the phd money yeah. and like they were so they just didn't hold back like they started off with a theoretical problem and by the end they're saying this could have implications for cancer research eventually <laughs> like helping pe millions of people around the yeah. world they just went for it. all those buzzwords you want to hit yeah. but the thing like so i guess if you're doing like physics or theoretical physics like physics can be fairly applicable to like industry but if you're doing theoretical physics it's probably more abstract yeah. which is I'd say harder to write for but then with biology you probably have to fill out ethical things that you wouldn't need to fill out for physics excellent like. segue <laughs> <laughs> segue is a good word yeah. um, but anyway speaking of <laughs> there was a yesterday maybe uh, I can't really remember you mean the Sometime 12th this week. of January uh, oh yes yeah, sorry uh, whenever this uh, <laughs> We're in November. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say which year. These are timeless. <laughs> yeah, yeah, timeless news articles. But so in China, they, well, a researcher, a scientist claimed that the first uh, babies have been born who were genetically edited. Mm. So obviously there's huge ethical implications around this. Uh, and it hasn't been verified. 
so it's only him claiming it so far and no external like researchers or labs have verified that he's actually done it but he claims to have edited the DNA of two twin girls when they were like in embryo uh, and yeah basically people are giving out because what's his name <laughs> so he works in <laughs> the Southern University of Science and Technology in Shenzhen. Shenzhen? Shenzhen? I don't know, somewhere in China. And his name is He Xuanqi. But he's, yeah, he, because I just read it as Dr. He, and I was like, oh, that's a very. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I definitely pronounced it wrong, also. He is an e- easy first name. Or yeah. First name? He? Yeah. Because yeah. then we can say, like, oh, he did this. He, it, so. he did this, <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Anyway, uh, who yeah, was so he? Yeah. who was he? Not good about his he wife, though, I suppose. No. Mrs. He. What did he do? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, basically the research. So I think initially what's important to point out, which I think is crazy. He didn't tell his university that he was going to do this research project and he funded it himself. Yeah. So he didn't have to go to any ethical boards, I don't think. He just said, I have the money, I'm going to fund this. Got eight couples that signed up. And basically, the study was to include HIV positive fathers and HIV negative mothers. So the kids don't have HIV. So instead. that was the, the gene editing was to prevent them from contracting HIV. So but they, they mightn't have had it. Or would they definitely have had it? Uh, I think th- if you have a child when you're HIV positive, you probably pass it to your kids. I, I think oh, yeah, I, I think yeah. there is probably a, a, a possibility of like luck being involved, but oh, yeah. it's fairly likely. No, I was just confused because I thought the mother didn't have it, and the father did. So they both have HIV, but one oh, was right. positive, oh, one okay. was negative. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and all the fathers are positive. And he he was actually on uh, unpaid leave from the university, yes, right? So he wasn't even. He's just like he's just like doing classic. it in his spare time. But not, I, did, and did he like go out looking for these people, saying it was research done at this institute? Like I don't know. I don't know if he like tricked them into it. Yeah. But I mean, because be, there's I like mean, every so basically they took it because they're if they were desperate for their kids not to have it. I mean, they would just try anything. Like so, I wouldn't even blame the parents. Yeah. So this, oh, yeah, but this is the other yeah. thing is that you don't know if it's going to work, and then you're letting HIV positive parents have kids. Yeah. So if it doesn't work, then you're just like you know introducing children who have HIV. Yeah. So there's there's this is like so like yeah. ethically. And unsound. <laughs> if the kids then have other problems, right? Because yeah, well, this is the other thing is you don't rain. know what you're actually yeah. causing, especially if it's not even in the university and not sanctioned by the university. Like yeah. you know, we don't have checks and balances in place. You're just doing it yourself. Now, I'm like you know, this was done with the CRISPR technology, which we won't go into. But basically, it's an easy way to like slice DNA and take bits out and put bits into your DNA. Uh, and it's been around for a while, but testing on like humans, like human embryos and stuff is illegal in most countries like the UK and America and stuff. I think it's legal in China as well. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's restrictions on it. um, But a lot of, like, articles on CRISPR, uh, you know, if you watch any YouTube videos or read any articles in newspapers, have always said kind of like China will probably be the first people to do it just because they were more, you know, liberal with their... Yeah, yeah, I mean, they have the social credit score system. Like, you know, they don't have the same ethical plans, I I guess. Didn't they try to clone people before, I think, as well, which other countries have disallowed? Anyway, basically, they were saying, like, China will probably do it. And this guy's coming out and saying he did. But the the biggest problem, right, ethically, is that these are going to be... This is going to be in the germline, so that if those kids have anything wrong, they have kids, like, that's going to carry through, essentially. So it's not just, like for an adult and and they're only monitor, monitoring the, the twins until they're 18 so what if there was like some genetic condition that doesn't be, I don't know if this if most genetic conditions appear before you're 18 but what if it's later on in life yeah well yeah. I've heard CRISPR also like being hailed as this like scissors you go in snip snip patch yeah and it's you, super easy for yeah. some reason then I heard a biologist talking about it though and they're like no it's like we don't know really what that like you're just changing DNA bases and you don't really know what you're putting back in. And well, that's the thing is like you you kind of make an educated guess on like we know that this gene is responsible for this behavior or this trait or something, and then we take it out or remove it or put in some benign gene instead. But you don't know the other consequences of that, so you have no idea what's going to happen. Like you, like what if you make them unable to contract HIV? Yeah. But you somehow cause like 
some genetic disease like Huntington's or something similar and then they're completely disabled yeah so this guy is obviously a professor and he's well versed uh, in like he's I'm pretty sure he's a professor research yeah. scientist it says doctor English. but I don't yeah. know if he's a professor but yeah that's in, yeah, yeah, what was the name of it? The Southern University of Science and Technology. But I think very quickly, then forty um, Chinese professors signed a petition saying, like, you know, oh, whoa. against it. Yeah, uh, I think it's hundreds now. Yeah, forty hundred. No, forty <laughs> hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah. uh, is that the population of China? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, everyone who has HIV. But yeah, it's a uh, super interesting. But it's mad, like, if it did work, I know there's, like, a lot of ethical issues around it, like, how, when, when do you stop, right? If it stops yeah. things like genetic diseases, that's good, right? That's what you want. Yeah. But where do you stop if you want to have a child with brown eyes or you want or to have... to be really tall. Or, or yeah, or athletic. to be really smart. And, then, and you yeah. get the designer baby problem. Yeah. yeah. And then you get this problem where it would probably only be available to rich people. Yeah. So then you've got a divide suddenly appearing in your society <laughs> where yeah. rich people suddenly get, you know better looking more athletic smarter and poorer people go the opposite way yeah it's the feedback loop then and yeah then they get... <clears throat> yeah which is yeah that just you open a whole host of problems but only there. like definitely things like uh, hiv where they can easily be isolated in the genome like things like even eye color well i think that's easy enough but like intelligence or something is so yeah. much more oh, complicated, so complicated. They don't know how yeah. Yeah, you don't know where that would stem from people go in and start but it was i did think of that like Back in the 60s and stuff when there was no ethics boards in universities mm. they did crazy research like the bottomies mm-hmm. and stuff um, and i think a lot of the um so after world war ii you know mendel and stuff were doing crazy experiments on jews and when the u.s um finished all that off they <laughs> kept the results and they used the results to kind of progress their thinking and like a lot of ethics boards now like if you if you want to do a survey on the like uh, mental well-being of uh, cancer patients you might not get ethical approval to that I mean you really have to say like you're not going to yeah. inconvenience them and the science is worth it and like so it does move at a slower rate yeah, and yeah. so <laughs> it's not good but I mean it's crazy like how like if there were no ethical qualms about anything people would just push on through and just fucking... probably because especially because yeah. like depending on the type of person you are but like some researchers would just see it as being like progressing science but there definitely is scenarios where that would be bad right Oh, for sure. And you're probably taking advantage of vulnerable people, right? yeah. especially if you're going to say, I'll pay you 100 quid if you take this or you do that. Yeah, you're I think of... this is like the whole premise of that, that book, Elephants on Acid, right? Where they do crazy experiments that are like, would not be done today. But anyway, that was like an example yeah. of one where this yeah. guy just gave elephants a load of LSD. I think an elephant died or something. Like that. Yeah. yeah. But like, that wouldn't be allowed now. And it's not like, so it's not just humans either. Like, yeah. Just yeah. Animals that even had very little scientific value. I was just. Yeah, it's how like, much it takes to kill it. Yeah, <laughs> it's strange. Like, why, why bother? But yeah, so I don't know. That's mental. But you know the way this professor's come out now, and he says, "I did this thing." Yeah. Right. Imagine there's there must be. I'm sure there's people in the world that have done it. Yeah. And just it, there's videos on anyone, YouTube like, of people using CRISPR and like injecting themselves with stuff. Really. Yeah. Like uh, I don't know how many, but there definitely is. I've seen videos of people doing it. It's crazy. That's mad. Because like, and they're not. They're not researchers they're they're just normal people who know nothing about dna or biology but you can get like home kits that you order and you edit things people are crazy enough to inject themselves with it but like how I, like i have no idea how crispr works like you was inject something yeah like, so basically yeah. It, it probably won't do anything because you're already developed so i think you're because you would imagine your cells like um would re, like you know split and reproduce yeah, yeah. and stuff and that's how it would pass through your body but when you're an adult i don't think it has but it wasn't having much of an effect right there. Well, yeah, it's yeah. not as easy to... When you're an embryo, you know, only a couple of cells or whatever. I don't know how many cells in an embryo, but then they all multiply, so it's easier to get the effect. Yeah. See, I thought you could still... It was allowed in the UK if you destroy the embryo within 14 days or something, because I think you can do some research on that kind of stuff. Maybe I'm completely wrong there. Uh, well, in China, they allow in vitro human embryonic stem cell research for a mm. pe- maximum period of 14 days. All oh, right. yeah. So for, like... Because yeah. stem cells... to the best place to get them from is embryos yeah. uh, but in, like in China anyway it's 14 days delicious. they allow you can like <laughs> delicious stem cells uh, you can basically get stem cells from embryos for 14 days and then you have to terminate it and you know that you're saying like how <laughs> often some research takes place outside academia as well and you can't really stop that and that's something that always puzzled me about like you see the 
uh, laws that are in place for university of what people can and can't do but then you see TV shows where they like put people through crazy shit and they would never be able to do that in university like even a lot of the stuff they contrive on Love Island like they're really making people hate each other I've been told <laughs> I don't <laughs> but one thing I came across recently is um, trepanation which is trepanation. the um, basically people drilling holes in their heads to relieve pressure and in their own heads yeah and that it like you know there's some kind of crazy following bonded and it makes people like they feel it makes them smarter or whatever right in their skull yeah in their head their, skull, their own skull like they, they go through the skull they like. drill a hole just in the center of their head it used to be done a long time ago but the odd person still does it because I know like the if you person. if you were like in an accident <laughs> and the, the like Laura <laughs> <laughs> I've done it three times no, I know, like, if you're in an accident and you've got brain swelling, they have to, like, doctors will drill a hole to release pressure and stuff. Yeah. So that you don't, dam- your brain don't, it doesn't get damaged when, like, it swells. But, like, this is just random, like, you're just yeah. feeling fine, like, a Saturday evening, cup of tea, and then drill a hole in your head? I don't understand. Yeah, I'm not, I, I guess we've got to look into it more. But, that's yeah. the, but it reminds me also of nootropics, which is people, you know, playing with... Uh, chemicals that you eat and then like it's supposed to increase your intelligence or whatever did we talk about this before i can't remember anyway. possibly i'm not sure it's like that film limitless or yeah. that other one lucy yeah yeah i think we might have but anyway who knows but uh, yeah but just that like yeah people take all sorts of crazy shit and they do their own experiments and they're very happy to just go and like stuff that you wouldn't you'd never be able to convince a like a, a university to like give people these random chemicals yeah, to see to if it makes the, them okay, smarter yeah. or whatever yeah but it's weird that you can get away with stuff on a tv show that you can't get away in, with in a yeah. Research. I guess so like with problems with universities or maybe that's problems not university. necessarily a problem but like it's, it's generally like public money or taxpayer yeah. money whereas if you're like a huge organisation you just have so much money yeah, do like, Google, you like, like you can do what you want like yeah. I mean, who's, to, who's to stop you yeah like, money really and that's what's is scary. the key yeah. motivator well, this guy isn't even ashamed of it right he's quite he still stands over it and says he's very proud of all the yeah, research yeah so this so. is the thing like today he came around and like defended it at yeah. some conference like you know it was packed full of reporters oh, journalists I'd say that would have been a big conference and, and like apparently he was late and they were like oh is he even going to show and then he walked out on stage and defended what he did but he said it wasn't supposed to get out so this other thing is that he wouldn't have said this only apparently you know, I don't know if he told somebody, but it got out like inadvertently, and so then he had to make a statement and defend it, basically. Conference like presentations are usually so boring. Imagine just yeah, this like, would be the most interesting. Yeah, anyway, we've just got a few embryos and fucked around with them. Yeah, now they don't have HIV. <laughs> yeah, amazing. That's yeah. mad. Though. Like, like as a scientist, right? I don't know. Your drive is to publish papers and to talk about things at conferences. Yeah. What he did, like, he couldn't do either of those things. Yeah, so what drove him to do that was it just himself yeah. classic yeah, I classic guess, I guess like the, the ability to do it is amazing right yeah. so Power. you could see that right it, it's kind of got this weird like you could see how people would have kind of a god complex about it oh, right? absolutely yeah so yeah. it is interesting yeah but it's still I think it's very unethical to do that behind closed doors not oh, telling absolutely. anybody with eight couples participating yeah, yeah so is there any other reason why it would be unethical just that it, you know we don't really know what you're doing you basically don't know what you're doing yeah. I think like yeah that's basically it uh, and that it's on human embryos right so yeah and he wasn't even in contact with people I guess of the best way to do it I you know just, yeah I mean there was literally no check for him to go do it he just got people to, yeah. to sign up but like in other countries I'm pretty sure they do uh, gene editing on uh, animals yeah or they've started it anyway and they made like sheep dolly but you know the, Columbus, the yeah. way like in countries as well where you can sell organs and there was a louis throw documentary yesterday about um adoption where people can buy or sell their babies okay. for adoption right in, in the u.s so you can do it when you're in america it kind of <laughs> but it kind of like messes <laughs> yeah. up the incentives and then you just basically have poor people who can't who need the money either selling an organ not in the u.s but in like parts of asia and in the US but people are selling their babies like because they like need the money and it there is an incentive that would just get fucking messed up once you start even if you allow that and you're offering money yeah, for you're running into and, horrific yeah. ethical issues then yeah I don't yeah, don't do that don't yeah. sell your babies yeah. Yeah. Right. that's that a good story right. yeah any other tidbits tidbits do you have any tidbits tidbits it's actually a big thing now with like ethics and AI right it, going back to kind of these big corporations having so much money and doing things behind closed doors now you have artificial intelligence going on like should there be it's growing so fast should there be like ethics behind that so if you're using yeah. ai to i don't know check if someone can get a visa or not or check if someone can yeah. enter or not um 
should there be ethics point there is it biased or yeah. should there be some formulation in place for some rules or some laws or to, to show your code to show what you trained on yeah exactly so yeah. you have to like nowadays you have to train usually if you have some sort of AI code working you have to train it on a data set if that data set is skewed if you you know you, it has to be a lot of them have to be classified by people beforehand yeah. and say if it's something like that like visa clarification and say if the country that is issuing the visas is skewed to, towards I don't know race, religion whatever um then your AI would probably learn that, right? But that's what happened in the US, right? In that when they ran it on whether um, inmates should get parole, and it basically just denied parole for black people because yeah. they were like they're going to reoffend. But like, that's so it crazy, just like, learned the, the system, like, yeah. but the way people were previously classifying it. But so. it's not taking into account the fact that, like, you know, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to be feeds, absolutely like the blind, com- it, yeah. the complexities so, of society and yeah. the feedback loops that we have that or the US has in the yeah. prison system, so yeah. Um, and then people don't know what it's doing right once you if especially if it's unsupervised it's yeah. just like oh that's the answer yeah, and yeah then you sell a product box. and you don't know what's going on right because it, yeah, it's especially at the moment right? like no real AI research can be done in universities because there's no money there like if you're an AI researcher and somewhere like Google or Amazon is paying you like a oh, seven yeah. figure salary yeah or like, and, and why would you go be a university professor and you're on maybe a hundred thousand? Yeah. But also, like in terms of equipment and facilities, oh, yeah. like those places are going to have the best ones because they have the most money. And to data. Them. I mean, like yeah, yeah. Google is like here's <laughs> ten billion records a day. Data points there, yeah. yeah. And yeah. they could do whatever they want with that. Like yeah. it's crazy. But I'm pretty sure some of the, like some of the the big the big folk in this sort of area, like Bill Gates and you know Musk and all them, have are, like said there should be ethical yeah. boards and it should be monitored so that people don't start doing crazy shit with AI and basically yeah. I mean Bill Gates hasn't been the most ethically uh, like ethical in his day though like and it, it often happens when people get to the top of an industry then they're like okay guys time to yeah, the brakes it, yeah Everyone's I've like, made my yeah, money yeah. so let's all be ethical now. yeah 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 that's true one of my friends in uh, AIB is a data scientist and they have all like the banking details for everyone and they're not allowed to run unsupervised machine learning on the data because they can't trace it like the data through the system and people apparently have a right to know like how their data is used and they're like oh we don't so, know we just yeah so if you ask them like well, what you did with that and yeah. they're like oh well I don't know the algorithm found some way yeah. to link your data to this <laughs> you information you know convolutional neural networks <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah start explaining explaining neural nets to them yeah, yeah. Um, but it's also true I don't know like just how quick things are coming it's not like robots are going to come and take over the world or anything like that they're good at really one specific job but you've seen that new I try to think of the Chinese news reporter, but it was just an AI bot. Yeah. That was scary. Yeah. Because it looked like a human was talking, but it was just given the words and it was generating a person speaking. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so it, it like was just like coming up with a so, speech, basically. For no, no. So it was like he gave it a speech, but it was re- reading the news and doing facial expressions that looked like someone. Was oh, it was an actual news. physical robot. Like. Yeah. Okay. No, no. I. Yeah. I think it was a screen, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was. A screen. It was like generating was, yeah. a video that looks. Looks like somebody reading yeah, looks the news. Like, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's crazy. It's or things they can like change like there was that famous Obama one where they changed him saying things that he wasn't actually saying but it looked like he was <laughs> that's yeah, actually yeah. very funny yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah you use maliciously you exactly can, yeah because now you can't like everyone knows you can't trust a photo if you see like a photo of something you just yeah. like photoshop but now yeah it's the same with video and sound yeah there's some podcasts mm-hmm. I've heard where they yeah just make a podcast out of the audio but make them discuss completely different things it's yeah entertaining but scary yeah terrifying yeah. Way, uh, I mean like yeah there's a lot of people always talking about all of that like if you like listen to any of Sam Harris's stuff he always talks about like how AI yeah. is suddenly going to once it becomes general AI then we're all yeah. going to suffer yeah that'll be a while yeah it's going to be a long way away yeah. and Area 51 will you get any clearance? <laughs> Uh, it's classified. <laughs> uh, not at all. No, be big foreign national badge on me. Oh, we'll go in oh, there. Yeah. yeah, they'll be like, don't let her near the special yeah. science. Yeah. <laughs> when do you get to? Do you have to be there for seven years or something? And you? I don't even know. You have to do some exam of like who was Lincoln or something. Yeah, I think you could. I don't know if you can ever get to. I don't know. You can definitely get a green card after. Uh, know, you get a years. green card. Yeah. Is that citizenship now? No. Yeah, you need an American. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. the American probably wouldn't even know because they don't have to do this. Right? They're already American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's good. But I think some, sometimes even if you're if you do a citizenship there, you're you're still framed upon. Framed, or you wouldn't get into certain places and things like that. That's like, weird. Yeah. Like if you're a dual citizen between the US and Iran. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why, because Elon Musk has loads of citizenships, right? 
Well, like he's three. originally South African, and then he has U.S. citizenship. I thought he's Canada. Maybe I made that up. Oh, maybe I don't know. Actually, maybe okay. I made this up. Anyway. So I like how we're loose, loose and fast. Loose and fast <laughs> with the facts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but we expect a lot of the listeners. You know, they're uh, knowledgeable. Yeah, I bunch. mean, they can look up their own facts. We're yeah. just pointing them right. in the right direction. You want to know a thing about machine learning? It was that paper I sent you about that. Um, they fed it a load of people's pictures of people's retinas. Um, retina. Ret- retina. Ret- is retina. Ret- retina. 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 Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> and then the machine was like, bloop, 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 bleep, bloop, computing. Bleep, bleep, machine bleep, learning. Bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. And then it could really reliably predict um, the gender of the person based yeah. on the retina. So I was looking at this and basically it wasn't just the gender though. Yeah, there was loads of stuff. Though. Yeah, but yeah. it could get like the age of the patient within like three and a half years or something. What? Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. And just from images of the retina. Because yeah, what usually happens in machine learning is you you're you're giving it answers like, you know, learn the difference between an apple and orange. But we could we can see how it did it, but we don't really know the features that it's picking picking yeah. out. So there's 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 a couple of things basically that we should probably preface this with. <laughs> yeah. So the paper the whole idea behind it is that you can doctors can predict like uh, the possibility of like cardiac conditions based on images of retina so there's like a load of vessels that go on your retina and if they're a certain way if doctors are like that those vessels look bad i don't know exactly what it is but they can say whether you're at risk of having like a heart attack or something um but the whole point of this is that they use deep learning machine like machine learning so buzzword deep learning (laughs) deep ai we have have some kind of noise to go yeah yeah Yeah, like (laughs) there we go um Anyway, so they basically put in images of the retina and got it to just take in some... They, they initially got doctors to point out some features that were important that they would have looked at. Mm. And then they fed those features in to the algorithm. But they also like just kind of took the whole picture and was like, all right, now you sort it, sort it out yourself. Have fun. Algorithm. I'll be, yeah. yeah, going for lunch. Yeah, I'm going for coffee, uh, whatever. And it did like way better than they expected where to a point where it was predicting things that doctors cannot predict from images of people's retina so one was the gender right yeah or so to like 97 percent accuracy yeah so you could predict the gender which doctors didn't know you could do from a retina yeah uh, so i think yeah there's different uh, so it's not accuracy it's area under the curve but it's area technicality under, yeah but, but the top comments i saw that was quite funny on that where the headline was you know you can predict the gender from a retina scan uh, someone said, I'm no supercomputer, but I would actually predict better accuracy if they trained the AI on pictures of the genitals instead. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> 100% accuracy. Are you going to cite that commenter there? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, dual to OF. <laughs> yeah. It's true, I'm not a supercomputer. <laughs> that, that is something that has irked me, though, that like... Um, it takes so many images to, to train a machine, though. Like, even the retina thing is loads. But if you showed humans, like, one picture of a retina with, you know... If you showed one clear distinction, that's all like, a person would need to run off with it. And, and Well, we're, it. like, humans are really bad at recognizing patterns, right? And the, the sample size, the amount of retina was, like, 270,000 patients. Yeah. And, like, so different retinas. That's a lot. Like, there's no way a human could even remember 10 different retina images. I remember every day in my life. But do, you, but do you remember your retina? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but like I think what you're saying it was true. Like you, mm-hmm. you saw like a few different types, and you and there, there were a little bit of a distinction. A human yeah. can learn very quickly, right? Yeah, it can mm-hmm. learn maybe five or six. So this is what doctors do, right? Yeah, is that yeah. They see pattern like obvious patterns that, yeah. that come out in the images. You know, yeah, like Whereas vessels. Like, yeah, like I wonder if you sat someone down and for their whole life they were just to learn about retinas. Yeah, pictures of retinas. Like if you come so specialized, they probably would be able to start picking things out but that's, that's the power of AI is that you just go off your coffee and you yeah. let it run yeah and it just figures it out yeah. but I guess if I yeah because if you showed me a picture of like you then I would just know what your face looks like from then on but a machine would need like 10,000 pictures of you yeah to be like okay but then it could it wouldn't make a mistake ever yeah would you make a mistake if you to identify lower a few points in you <laughs> <laughs> on your American you. accent <laughs> I thought it gets a bit blurry yeah. uh, what is the accent like where you're going because it's um, yeah, do us a Washington do accent. I don't know. Washington, what is a Washington DC accent? accent? It's kind of like I'm mixing. No, I guess it's Washington's a funny place. Washington DC because it's like <laughs> Washington like, State. Yeah. Leave those Washington State people alone. Because <laughs> oh, oh. um, it's kind of like if you go south, you're in Virginia, and that gets real kind of a southerny accent. Yeah, but you're kind of halfway between there and, and like Maryland, which is 
I don't know what I'd imagine a like, typical American accent would be. Like even like in New York, then you've got a couple of different accents. Yeah, or yeah. And then you go, so you're just like what, like a few hours drive from New York? Yeah, and then you're like an hour from Baltimore, two hours from Philadelphia. Like oh, so just, I don't know. So correct. basically, <laughs> just watch The Wire, and that's yeah. the accent of Baltimore. Yeah, yeah I was going to say, if you read all of the necessary material on Trump and politics, yeah, and yeah. the right and the left. Uh, yeah, that's uh, going to no. be funny yeah. to get over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, knee deep in political. Yeah. Yeah. Stuff. And then you can complain about campuses and people uh, being too liberal. And then deplatforming, and then you can be a chilled. Yeah. Uh, and you can't say all the things you want to say. Yeah. Or yeah. else you'll be part of the intellectual dark, dark web. Actually, this is a segue to what I want to talk about. <laughs> speaking of segues, <laughs> <laughs> segue is such a great word. Can we just take a moment to appreciate the word segue? Segue. segue. Hit the segue. button. Yeah. Um, boop, boop, boop. There's a new journal being started by three people. One of them three persons. Three persons plural one of them is peter singer who's like a moral philosopher i don't know the other two so their names didn't stick with me those names elude you um but it's a journal of what? for philosophy of controversial Psychology? ideas in uh, general yeah no there must be some base of so it'll probably be mainly like social sciences Wait, what did you say Peter Singer was again? He's a, he's a moral ethicist. So he has a book <laughs> moral uh, ethicist. called like um, Animal Liberation. And, you know, he's re- so do you know that no. idea that if you're walking down, it was a thought problem, but you're walking down the street in your new suit and like there's a five-year-old boy or maybe like a one-year-old because five-year-olds can stand up and stuff. Okay. A one-year-old yeah. girl or boy yeah. face down yeah. in a puddle drowning and you've new shoes on. It's like, are you morally obliged to like lift them out of the puddle? Yeah. The answer is obviously yes, but, <laughs> but you're destroying your shoes, which are worth a couple hundred quid. And his point is basically this is the choice we make at every instance of our lives because there are kids we could save for the price of a pair of shoes in America, in America, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the damn <laughs> Bible Belt <laughs> puddles everywhere. Uh, but he just draws an equivalence across this for like poor children. And then he has another book about where he's saying like animals' rights are should rival our own, mm-hmm. and yeah. you know you should okay. not so shoot the cows. Super moral. Yeah, so apparently then obviously there must be some ideas that people feel they can't publish or so one of the, the niches about the journal is that they can you can publish under a pseudonym if you want, which is kind of weird. Yeah, that is strange. I mean as a person who's researching something like if it, if it's your work, you kind of want your name on it, right? So that yeah. you can get out I'm there. I'm just gonna waste like, a year of my life. Yeah, researching this thing and then being anonymous and publishing it. Yeah. I like, guess it's probably that thing though that you if you made a name for yourself, you don't want to ruin it. And maybe okay, it's something that's yeah. a little bit out there that you want to test the waters. So for what you. you're saying is you're reaching your like mid forties as a researcher, and you've got some crazy ideas now. So but, you want to get but once them out you're there. tenured, right? You should want should like, and if you really stand over your research, you should just try get it published. Because if it doesn't pass peer review, then it doesn't. And if it does pass peer review, then it does. Yeah. I mean, but this is still peer reviewed, right? It is still peer reviewed. So, but then it seems just unnecessary. More, so, like lenient with their ideas they put through. Or? It seems w- I can't see how it won't just turn into a normal journal. No, a place for people to like publish like or try publish things like you know, uh, oh like race and IQ differences and yeah, like the classic, just yeah. yeah, but just things that are like basically not published because they're not good science or flat earthers maybe. Yeah. Well, I don't know though. I feel like it'll end up just becoming a normal journal because you have to get people to review it, right? Yeah, and unless those review reviewers are somehow open to more controversial ideas like how yeah. do you screen for reviewers who are more open to the controversial ideas than others yeah well i guess what is a controversial like i can't even <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah so how do you define that and Any then controversial ideas or i don't know like say for example if you like country at the moment is things talking about women in science and um Should there was that allowed? talk Personal. exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we did see 50 50 um but there was that talk um in CERN about your man from oh, yeah. italy and he was oh, saying yes. that he did all this this yeah. uh analysis to show that maybe women aren't as good at science and yeah. men are actually the ones that are missing out now whereas like even if you had done some robust study and you found that i don't know like you really thought that you'd found some significant difference um or even that i don't know something even if it was scientifically correct like i'm not saying this is true but say if it yeah. was yeah. um a journal might be like i'm not going to publish that because i don't want that on my end yeah. right I don't even want to look at it. I'm not going to send it out for review. Yeah. Whereas this maybe is a bit more lenient towards. Yeah, but then I suppose like with his example in particular, like clearly his biases were so. Oh in yeah, his own absolutely. Work. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's hard to know. Yeah, but... any, any. Well, I guess okay. Like if you looked at the average 
brain size between men and women i don't know who'd be bigger but like if you took like a thousand samples of each obviously they're not gonna have the same mean yeah and it but yeah it's like is it worth publishing at all yeah. i don't know it's still science Probably i guess yeah. like, but who's yeah. spending a year of their life doing it as well like are yeah. there no better things <laughs> yeah. to yeah i mean that was the whole thing behind the race nike debacle that <laughs> yeah. kind of rose its head in the last like two years where there was some guy who basically found a link between different races and IQ and people got really angry yeah. and yeah and one of the main things was like why bother yeah why bother researching that because if you know it might just lead to essentially racism yeah uh, but then the other point is that if it's done and the data's there why not benefit but from it but I think it? that would get published that would you know I think I think it would get published in a serious journal if it was seriously done and presented so yeah, actually that's yeah as long idea. as there's no obvious biases or like yeah. issues with the way the data was analysed I feel like if it's sound data there's like yeah. you can't really turn it away but maybe uh, journals would out of a fear of backlash etc especially yeah. now yeah. yeah I guess it's like what your conclusions are from that right so if you found yeah. that it's probably because yeah. there's less people at the time yeah. going to universities or I don't know how they were testing for IQs exactly yeah you yeah. have to be so soft with your conclusions though because any even the conclusions I've written have been told to pull them in to basically you know yeah. nothing don't claim yeah. anything yeah, yeah exactly so I mean science yeah. is vague apart from when it's not and to, to, yeah. to write under a different name like seems so unnecessary like you're gonna get like death threat like I mean again don't publish it or do publish it like stand over it and publish I feel, it I feel like the people who would have controversial ideas if they want to publish them would publish under their own name anyway right yeah. Yeah. whereas if you have controversial ideas and don't want to publish them yeah, especially then you, the idea of having a pseudonym is not yeah. important especially anymore. if you did believe in it like if you've done it and you said look this is the truth that has to yeah it's yeah. weird what's the name in the journal do you know it's called natural journal no, I don't know I think it's just called the journal of controversial ideas for now it's not set up yet yeah so maybe maybe it would just fit better into something like a social science yeah. where you don't have maybe like <clears throat> robust statistical data or something I don't know yeah how, or there's more like can you think ideas. of any physics controversial ideas I mean oh uh, they're so like abstract probably at this but stage they're also so fringe that they exactly, wouldn't get yeah. published yeah they'd probably be at the like the opposite end of theoretical physics or something someone was saying know. you could uh, send in like a, you know all these hoax articles that are going around oh, actually yeah. get a uncontroversial idea published in the controversial <laughs> ideas <or not. laughs> and that'll show them yeah and then they'll have to like uh, retract their article yeah. publication that's bad though yeah seems necessary very America very where you're going yeah enjoy yeah, yeah. very polarised yeah be have fun now. I will be around It'll be good be there for the next uh, next presidential election oh They're that'll be interesting that. yeah. yeah yeah would you get to vote or anything huh no no no, but you, you, you get to, to you get to wallow in the political unrest yeah so my cousin was over from America and the night of the Ireland presidential election she was like, when the results be out? And I was like, ah, they'll start counting tomorrow. And she like couldn't believe that they would wait. Like in America, as soon as the box closes, it's opened and they start counting. Yeah. And yeah. everyone's just like, ah, we'll count them tomorrow. Sure, yeah. it's a Sunday. We'll, we'll leave it tomorrow. It's so yeah. different though. I mean, like I know, here yeah. the president has no power whatsoever. Yeah, well, there's, that, there's that picture of uh, Michael D. Higgins queuing at an ATM machine on Grafton Street a few years ago. <laughs> He's not even like a f- first in the queue. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> Spike Lee even needs money like as well. Like, yeah, yeah, well, yeah it's take yeah. a... I don't know. You also like you always forget as well. Like Ireland's actually so small. Yeah. Like yeah. we're so tiny compared to everywhere else, <laughs> especially well, the it, states and the power that they have. Yeah, we're essentially That's a powerless like, nation when yeah, it comes to that. Yeah. You know, but, but yeah, the presidential election in the US that would be really interesting. Um, I would say it would get very annoying though because. I'd say it's so in your face over there. You, know? you can be our US correspondent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll call what in. What's the inside scoop yeah. from <laughs> Washington? <laughs> if we're still, if we're still recording in two years' time, I'm here at the the White House. Yeah, but the most important question is: Would you be a Democrat or Republican? Because you have to be one or the other. Yeah. In the US, you can't be anywhere in between, no, or else they'll shoot you with their, their guns that there. they have. Yeah. And you can't be a libertarian because only that, that's reserved for weirdos, right? Yeah. <laughs> You can't own a gun and support abortion. There, no, it's no. incompatible. Yeah, because you're a Republican. That's, yeah, so, with the two-party system. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that should be fun, but hopefully, now oh, the commotion will be good for a while, though. Yeah, I guess when you when it's not your country, I know that's that's. But Actually, but you know, like you, it's, it's it's like it's kind of more viewing from the outside. Yeah, but you'll yeah. be living there, though. So. That's true. But you should want as well, like Republicans generally 
I mean, would probably donate or get mo- money for NASA, right? You know, they're all about military space. Let's yeah. go. Didn't Trump reduce the budget for NASA? Maybe he didn't. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. He tr- like reduced it for certain said, sectors, right? I, mean, I think he, he said he was going to reduce it, but then he increased it when the whole Space Force thing came into effect. Yeah. Mm. Um, space Force. Space Force. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And you're joining the Space Force. Join the Space Force. Yeah, you're going to be part of it. You're going to be like ground base for Space Force. Would yeah. you ever go to the sun? <laughs> <laughs> Only at night. <laughs> Don't get burned. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Would you even go to the moon? I mean, uh, I, if I if I come back, yeah, no, the moon would be close enough that you can come back. So like, I would go to the moon. Would you go to space? Like, I think it, it would be space. absolutely terrifying, but I it'd yeah. be so cool. Yeah, I don't think you could turn down the offer. That's the thing. It's like I don't know if I'd like because so you could never say no. Yeah, because so know few if people I'd have been to space, to right? Yeah, like so few. I don't know what the percentage for like human whole, race yeah. or whatever. But. So I'm gonna say in the hundreds, probably. Of people, what hundreds? Do you think? You think it'd be yeah. hundreds? Oh, maybe like over hundred must be, is it? Oh, what do you call most space, of those? Like, most of those would be yeah. Russia, and the, the US, right? Cars and a lot of the same people went and all the dogs in different missions. Stuff. Yeah, like a lot of people go up a couple of times for different yeah. missions. So, but I was actually looking at this recently. Uh, this random that we're talking about it, but um, uh, you know, like ESA opened uh, their astronaut like hiring process in the like seventies or eighties sometime, and you know, got a couple of astronauts. And then they did it again in like 2008. Yeah. But that's it. Yeah. ESA have relatively like 15,000 applicants or something. Yeah, now it's down to like eight or something. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe it was more. I'm not sure. It could have been in the teens. But it's uh, it's mad because like, you know, Europe has no way of actually getting its astronauts into space to the International Space Station, right? Yeah. Well, there's the States at the moment, right? Mm. Uh, but the States don't have a way to get in at the moment. They, that's, what, that's what I mean yeah, yeah they don't right oh yeah yeah so yeah. they all have to go to Kazakhstan and yeah. use the like Sorry. Russian Soyuz rocket to get up into space but they're always crazy. guaranteed someone on the space station aren't they I think the US and Russia are always guaranteed and then the other yeah. ones but um, maybe Europe I think Europe always can have one too right yeah I think it might mm. and oh, yeah, then Japan is involved as well yeah. sometimes but and there's been no one from Ireland yet ever but in space, it's crazy because right? uh, the US have a thing saying that no Chinese uh it's actually a name for Chinese astronaut. I think it's a Takinot or something. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, it comes yeah, okay. from the, this, yeah. the Chinese word for space or something. I don't know. Um, but the US have something that like, Chinese uh, astronauts aren't allowed on the space station. <laughs> They're like, we don't want to go, but they can't go. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. So like, the Chinese have their own space station. Yeah. yeah. I can't remember the name of it. That's the thing. When the Japanese uh, thing landed on a thing. <laughs> meteor a few weeks ago. Uh, anyway, it just wasn't that satellite big. Satellite? Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's little... pretty cool. Yeah, but nobody cared as much as, like, all that Europe stuff. Well, that was because we were in Europe, maybe. Yeah. Maybe we were biased there. Yeah. yeah maybe it was true. huge in Japan and all the news was in Japanese, so we just didn't see it. Yeah, so I was in talking in a school, and I was talking about uh, that dog, Leica. Leica? Leica. Russian dog, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It went to space, and obviously I was just talking and about died. it. died. Well, then they were like... Hey, yeah, where's the dog now? <laughs> I'm like, oh shit! It died. Never start a story about a dog that, that died. They, just, <laughs> they left him there. For an hour. <laughs> yeah, all those kids going home having nightmares about their dog dying in space. So or... maybe if we send yeah. Nickers to space, <laughs> <laughs> that guy will finally die. He will start orbiting. No. Yeah. <laughs> the gravitation will just another moon. <laughs> Reentry will just hit, impact the surface yeah. in a huge crater. Yeah, yeah. I think like cows would burn up pretty well in the atmosphere it smells so, like beef yeah. Right? Yeah, <laughs> they'll be yeah. burgers by the time they get down so I think it smells like a car sized asteroid will have minimal effect it burns up a lot really? yeah and oh, it happens that's crazy like that's pretty big every year or something like that yeah but yeah, there's, some there's satellites power, are that big right like Hubble a, is Hubble just going to fall down? yeah Hubble is Hubble's probably about the size of a car and one, the yeah. space station's going to do something about it actually yeah, yeah they all so th- actually the Chinese one fell recently didn't it yeah so it deorbited yeah. recently and that was, thing, and that they, was huge and they didn't know they, didn't, they lost control of where yeah. it was going to fall so yeah. they were like it might be the Pacific also it might be Nebraska yeah <laughs> yeah it ended up being the Pacific in the end yeah. but like if that had fallen on a populated city like that would be caused damage yeah. they also they were you know confident in you know inverted commas or whatever that it would burn up in the atmosphere and that was pretty big <laughs> yeah. that's the lazy option isn't it it's like uh, yeah it'll definitely burn up <laughs> it's it's all the but if it doesn't <laughs> but a few people here die from getting meteors in the head right how few I like, feel like it's very few seven 
Seven. You shouldn't make that up. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like you made that number up. All right. Maybe. Or is it like seven people might get hit or something like that? But no, but the chances of you getting hit no. by a Do it. Actually, did this happen last year? I feel like someone, a, a bus or something was hit by a meteor and somebody died. But that was like the one story last year. Yeah. That I, that I think very few people have. Oh, it's in the thousands. So. Oh, really? <laughs> no. Ten um, percent of the human population die from meteor <laughs> striking them in the face. One in ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're lucky to be alive. Treasure every second. Wouldn't it be the scariest thing though if you went to the moon and then couldn't get home? The Earth like blew up. With your <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that would be. But well, you'd be just doomed to die. Yeah, unless there's an established base on the moon. Yeah. So yeah, NASA said they were going to the moon recently. What do you think about that, Laura? Oh, you're pretty cool. Yeah. Why not go back to the moon? Can you get there? Would you not? What do you think, Moon or Mars? What team are you on? You can only pick one. You can't know. be in between. I feel like Mars is hashtag just, Musk. It's just hashtag, too far. Hashtag Musk or <laughs> hashtag NASA. Yeah. Would you be like six months in a spacecraft? Before you to get Mars. There? Yeah. Yeah. I that think it's, it's five, somewhere like five and a half. Or something, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's crazy. I think the biggest issue going to Mars though is the radiation, right? Yeah, exactly. You're not protected by the Earth's magnetic field yeah. anymore. You go in a spaceship, you go outside that magnetic field, and you die of cancer very soon. Yeah. So I don't think they have a, a solution for that. No. And they're still, like, SpaceX are still saying they'll get people to Mars, like, by 2030 or something. No I way. think it might even be pre-2030. Yeah, and yeah. ESA keeps talking about a moon base, but... Yeah, I mean, I think a moon base would make way more sense initially. But that's because yeah. you, test, you can every, test every, like, you know, every, like, decade or so yeah. it comes up. But people are, like, what's mad at the moment in Silicon Valley is, like, uh, like space mining, right? Astro space mining. mining. But, but yeah. mining do, on the do, moon, do, do, right? So yeah. it isn't that hard to get to the moon, like, relatively, rather than, like, landing on an asteroid and taking some, something from there. But there's a lot of minerals on the moon that people want. Yeah. Um, like and that is a dust. huge like companies that are investing in this yeah. and they're also like investing in it in a point like where it being like a petrol station if you're going on to Mars yeah. and you can also do nuclear testing of like launching things right <laughs> that'd be so cool to look from the earth at like a nuclear explosion oh that would be amazing yeah. That, yeah. that would be just feeling those gamma rays beaming yeah, down. yeah, yeah. No, you, when you see that you know you're in the future you've reached it yeah, yeah. that's this it this is the future this is we can bomb the moon finally <laughs> so you many parallels with it. but when Jasper frees himself into a freezer in the Simpsons and yeah. like, moon bye what a time what to be a we learn we'll be like time. moon nukes what a time to be alive because that's like the thing like, realistically you're going to have to use nuclear power if we're still using yeah. like combustion to get in space yeah and like you just at the way we are at the moment but you can't you use can controlled never... nuclear power to launch a rocket right well not on earth right yeah. there's yeah. so many things at the moment in the way people... <laughs> yeah there's so many rules in place for the right reason that do you think that would pass an ethical board to start no like way. blowing yeah. up nukes on the moon you're obviously yeah. a fan of solar sails oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> the slowest way to get anywhere yeah. <laughs> a solar sail your enjoy way to enjoy the Mars. journey <laughs> yeah this is 10 where, years to the moon this yeah. is where the sun literally slowly wafts you along <laughs> this ride the way <laughs> the pressure of the photons actually, is, it, it? is it photon pressure or is it ion pressure from the wind I think it's photon pressure I don't yeah, know yeah I think it it's is photon the, pressure yeah, yeah. I don't know if the wind would really. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to blow into the mic. Yeah. We get some nice uh, winds effects in here. Ooh. No, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, as you can imagine, listener, the uh, average photon does not push you very far. I thought you were going to have some specific number about the average <laughs> photon weighs. <just> the average <laughs> photon weighs nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, it's funny how tech will always drive. Thing, like the tech industry things much faster I'd say if they decide they're going to go to space like they want to go to the moon probably even in 10 years like Facebook could be on the moon yeah. do you know so no exactly and, interests that, you and that's what kind of is driving it at the moment yeah. right a lot of it's better than war yeah driving it yeah and even in like I know like Google now have um, like a research group looking at exoplanets really? Like, yeah. yeah that's amazing um, I want to work with those people yeah so they're hiring postdocs and they're, they're using AI and they're using they have like giving scientists the use of all their Amazing Google, things. if you're listening, give me a job, yeah. please. Well, that's, like, what profit did that does yeah. that have, right? But well, they're no, interested. It's, they have it's so much money now that yeah. they don't need to make profit from and that. You have I guess. Have a lot of nerds Google. Sure, they, to, they owe Ireland like twenty billion, and they're just yeah, like yeah. yeah, grand. But I, I saw 
uh, I was looking at some exoplanet data from Kepler yeah. and someone commented on it being like oh those exoplanets like if we were to send someone there they wouldn't get back for hundreds of years and I was like oh you're clearly not like <laughs> astronomy like yeah. 100 like, years would be great <laughs> that would be fantastic yeah, space yeah. Is if you could great. get somebody to another planet in 100 years we probably would have already tried <laughs> yeah but even yeah. that's not good enough they'd be dead like it has to be less no, you could send like two generations that's yeah. better than the well like thousands and thousands of years it would yeah, actually you, take to get the nearest two star two generations but they won't even have first hand experience of it <laughs> yeah. no, exactly. well my mom said it was, was nice yeah, my mom said it was yeah. nice yeah. <laughs> yeah. my granny got there we stayed for <laughs> 10 years the thing about going to Mars yeah because like people probably will be making a one way trip and just be like well we'll just set up life yeah yeah that makes yeah. a lot of sense the only thing is sustainability really yeah. so they have to get that down right but also like the, the ethics of that like no one's died in space really no, no one's actually died in space. Yeah, just yeah. in the atmosphere, people have died yeah. in launches and stuff. So, right? what happens then? What are the laws in space? What if you murder someone in space? Yeah, and then you become a space ghost. Right? Space ghost, yeah. <laughs> if you're murdered Haunt in space. The sky. But that's the thing, yeah, who owns? Like, can you actually mine the moon, or is that like. Yeah, so I asked someone this, right? There's there is a moon talk, treaty, right? And uh, they literally said we would ask for forgiveness rather than ask for permission. And I was like, geez. That's and that bad. makes a lot of sense, though, because I feel like people wouldn't be. People wouldn't care. Well, but well, no, by the like, time they get a law in place, if, you're if already... First you, if first you went and started mining the moon and making a big profit off it. Yeah. yeah. Of course people are going like, to... No, they would, like, they would care, but I feel like it would be a case of like, oh, all right, we'll let you away with it, but now there's a lot of laws in place, so you have to find a different way to get around this and then get a loophole, and also we want in. What if they yeah. just write America sucks on the moon? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And big, massive quarries <laughs> yeah. going around. Yeah. Now, uh, what's the like most wanted thing on the moon? I don't know. There's Water? Like, yeah, water, I think. Because you can make hydrogen some... from water. Yeah. Tomato cheese, Actually, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Dust, I think, is the main constituent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The big dusty ball. There's some also radioactive materials there you can use. Yeah. Um, for to nuclear, nuclear yeah. launches. Yeah. Like a lot of uranium, mm -hmm. plutonium. Mm -hmm. Now we've got the NSA listening to us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going to the moon. The, but people also want to put a radio telescope, like, so, yeah. like a low fire station, get a good. Baseline. Low fire making another appearance. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, yeah. last time I said it's, a, I was, it's yeah. actually a very interesting idea because like the atmosphere just blocks out. You you can't observe a lot of frequencies in radio because of the atmosphere. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, getting to the moon and building yeah. a, a telescope on the moon is difficult. But that's so. It, yeah. One of the ideas is because radio telescopes you can make with just essentially just like antennae that you have on your car, right? But the idea is that you put them in a big massive carpet of plastic. And then you just go launch, go to the moon, land somewhere, and just roll it out. That was one of the main ideas. And you just like hope it works. A radio rug, I don't know. Yeah, and it was yeah. going to be like huge, like you know, hundreds and hundreds of square meters. That'd yeah. be pretty cool. The moon based thing they were talking about bringing three printers as well, weren't they? You just print yeah. do whatever you need. I thought you said tree printers. Three like, printers. Three printers is oh, not good. Like, <laughs> you know, just have one three D printer, and then you could print oh, the rest of the. These are printers. regular printers. Just normal printers, yeah. Because oh, then you could get bank. all your yeah. documents yeah. together and in order. Passport. What's the law? Print out the Wikipedia article. Of <laughs> yeah, space could you, I just need a scan of my passport. Yeah. Um, the atmosphere, be, though, no, like because people are just using that as an excuse to not like. If there was, if I couldn't blame the ionosphere on the lack of my progress in my PhD, I'd be in trouble. So <laughs> I fear the day when a PhD student that doesn't have that excuse doesn't have the excuse of the atmosphere getting in the way. Yeah. yeah, it'd be really cool to have a moon base though. If people could like live there for, even if it was only for a year or two years at a time, that'd be classy. Yeah, but I guess the thing is, you still have with radiation. You do, but uh, I guess you probably would build underground, right? Gene editing. Yeah. Gene, Gene editing, editing make you impermeable <laughs> to radiation. Yeah. Radiation does not affect me. But, but if they were there for like, uh, say, 10,000 years, thinking long scale here, yeah. I mean, a different you know, That's race a would time. develop. Not well, a race, you, but you'd a have lunar people. I don't know what yeah. word they would pick as. Well, a, I guess you wouldn't have humans. Martians, humans. at least, is already taken. Yeah, yeah. Martians yeah. done. Easy. Sorted. L L Loon Loons? <laughs> send the loons loonies yeah, that's yeah. offensive yeah. to lunar people yeah. but I guess the thing is that like they're gonna you're talking about if you did have a base on the moon and you needed things to be done you'd send robots there you'd send yeah beforehand send, yeah and it's a lot easier to get to, like it just it's much shorter yeah so. Siri and such yeah and AI uh, but it would be interesting to if there were people living there then they would eventually start having like kids and stuff and then imagine being like the first person not born on earth yeah. that yeah. would be insane well you've no passport well, you'd have a moon passport. Yeah. I'm from that, the moon. Duty-free. Well, duty-free well, like, duty is very good, but like yeah. the getting into different countries is very yeah. difficult. But how would that work growing a baby in 
like less gravity. Birds and the bees. Well, we don't know. Yeah. Uh, that goes back to that. Well, no, that thing we talked about before with the sperm banks in space, and they wanted to send up pregnant women to give birth. Yeah, in we space. could probably talk about that. It mightn't get revisited. Who knows? Yeah. Wait, so they, this is the thing. Yeah, a guy wanted to basically put up, uh, just get a lot of sperm and eggs and put them in space in case of like an apocalyptic. Okay. I don't know, anything really. Delta contributed. Uh, you know, I didn't have, actually. I, I didn't have the money. <laughs> well, I can't remember how much it was, but it was expensive yeah. to to yeah. participate. But that um, that tripped me up. You have to pay. Like you didn't get paid. Yeah, if you want your DNA in the next generation of humans, you have to pay. But then the that was the first phase, and then there was other phase where you like uh, actually conceive an embryo or whatever the first stage of an embryo is in space, yeah. and then bring it down to Earth, and then it's like. Space baby. Well, it's given like giving birth in space, and then the last phase was like to send a pregnant woman to space, and then she gives birth in space. But I don't know, like that was just some crazy guy that yeah. had a, an idea, and he set up a company and tried to get money from people. But it would be really cool on the moon, like because it's definitely possible. But obviously, it's got what one sixth of the gravity. I don't mm. know how that affects the development of a baby. Oh, it could be all sorts of problems. Yeah, imagine, imagine they'd be super tall in. after yeah. a couple of generations. Anyway, good basketballers. But you'd be growing well, even with the first generation, because you'd be you'd grow right from a baby and have yeah. not not a lot of force on your spine and stuff they so would be crippled if they came down to earth though They'd they be wouldn't like, be oh they, they probably wouldn't be able to come back to yeah it'd be so heavy yeah. you'd be stuck on the moon forever bit of less muscle mass. but I wonder if it would be something weird that you'd grow like a baby would grow a big head or something. I don't know <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, you, never, you, you don't never know, know. Yeah. you don't know yeah. 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 that's yeah. why I mean that's a lot of reasons why like the like NASA and ESA and justify all their experiments in ISS is because we don't know how like zero gravity affects yeah. they're still growing plants in space right yeah they that geotropism where they thought that roots go to gravity apparently isn't in space they still grow up and down really yeah so they're that's like, interesting yeah yeah because like if you send someone to mars and they're in space for six months like how does that zero gravity affect, affect them for yeah. six months you yeah know? yeah Could fuck with their head because there's something like even they don't know why when you go in space or even in the iss like your eye goes weird like you can't see as well mm. but when you come back it comes back but they don't know why so it, does it happen like immediately or over time it's just i don't like, know i think it's over I time i think it's over time yeah yeah but I, I vaguely know. remember reading yeah. something about that but yeah because I heard yeah like being in space and an astronaut it's actually kind of like being drunk or you're a bit dizzy all the time yeah. so it's not just that a case of you're doing simple experiments you actually have to try to focus when you're like uncomfortable yeah there's like lots obviously lots of complicated things you don't really think about when people go to space like how do you go to the toilet and all that yeah the seatbelts yeah well mm. they have lots of complicated ways <laughs> and obviously like it's different for guys and girls right is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> With gene editing, it's not. Yeah. Uh, that actually was like I read something recently about like the first women that went to space in NASA, and like they didn't like the engineers in NASA were all guys and just you know just didn't bother asking the women about specific you know womanly needs that they might need. That's and not. Yeah, yeah, they were just like let's not. But like so yeah. they're risky. Like the, first of all, the spacesuits didn't fit any of the women because they were like slightly smaller frame <laughs> yeah. and everything. Big crotch. <laughs> but they didn't want to didn't want to complain because they didn't want to be like seen as causing hassle. So they essentially just had spacesuits that didn't fit them well. Like their knees weren't in the right place and stuff. But like apart from that, then they also had no idea like should they send tampons up with all these women and like gave the first woman like a box of hundreds of them yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the lads thinking about like how many should we send yeah. <laughs> and then eventually they were like you know what let's invite them into the meeting and ask them directly yeah. and they were like what one two ten hundred there's a former astronaut who was giving a talk in cork and i was like why is he in so, cork <laughs> yeah well, it was cit so cork institute of technology and like no offense to them but i was like this is a small venue like oh, for an astronaut taken um, but it's actually his wife is from Kinsale oh, so that's that was cool. cool yeah that is interesting yeah. but there was like, like he's the American astronaut he was the American and there was like hundreds of kids there for space week it was a big big hall and any questions and like <laughs> like a girl in the transition year put up her hand and was like yeah like how do women deal with their period in space uh, yeah yeah and I was like wow that's fair play for us the other thing was that like yeah. initially yeah, answers, the way guys like uh, urinated in space was just essentially like a condom shaped thing <laughs> right but really? then that wouldn't work for women so they had yeah. to design a whole new system. Oh. Yeah. Engineers. Get a like, shiwi. You know those like, like funnel things. Yeah. yeah you, you don't want one of those breaking in space. So. <laughs> yeah. But I guess would it funnel? Like, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't yeah. funnel. Yeah. Yeah, wouldn't. yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> See, already running into yeah. issues. It's issues, complicated. Yeah. Right, best not send the women at all. Yeah, yeah just do a hassle. Yeah, this is why I didn't send them in the first place. Controversial so. ideas. Write up our yeah. paper. <laughs> space is for the men. <laughs> and then they developed all the technologies. So. I think actually what they ended up making was... Um, 
like nappies like diapers which was what <laughs> like so actually they started using for babies then you know, oh, like really? NASA really developed loads of technologies that nobody knows how they'll be used, and then they get yeah. end up being used everywhere in like the modern, modern life. It's a thing that companies always tag on to their product if they can, like NASA developed. You yeah. know, you see it on yeah, crazy yeah. products. That are- yeah. 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 Yeah.